First of all, read the design problem statement carefully. Then note down the given data. Let us take a design problem statement as follows. Design a simply supported, singly reinforced concrete beam having clear span equal to 3 meter. The width of support is 200 mm. The live load on the beam is 16 kilonewton per meter. The grade of concrete is M20 and the grade of steel is Fe415. Now let us note down the given data as clear span is equal to 3 meter, width of support is equal to 200 mm, live load is equal to 16 kilonewton per meter. As the concrete is M20 grade, the value of FCK is equal to 20 newton per mm square. The steel grade is Fe415. Hence, the Fy is equal to 415 newton per mm square. Start the solution with step 1 by deciding the initial cross-sectional dimension of the beam. The initial effective depth of the beam can be assumed based on the vertical deflection criteria by referring clause 23.2.1 of IS456. This clause gives the maximum value of span to effective depth ratios. Here, for simply supported beam, maximum value of the span to depth ratio is 20. Hence, to get the safer section for the bending, use span to depth ratio equal to 12 to 15. Rearrange this equation of a span to depth ratio. You can start with the span to depth ratio equal to 12 and calculate the initial effective depth. To calculate the total depth, we require to calculate effective cover. Assume nominal clear cover based on the clause 26.4.2 table 16. Take clear cover equal to 30 mm for moderate exposure in absence of the exposure data. Next, assume appropriate bar diameter. For simplicity, take the bar diameter equal to 20 mm. Next, calculate the effective cover by adding the clear cover with the half of the diameter. Now, compute the initial total depth of the beam by adding an effective cover to the effective depth. Round it off to nearest multiple of 50 mm. For example, if we get initial total depth equal to 315 mm, then round it off to 350 mm. Or if it is equal to 367 mm, then round it off to 400 mm. After finalizing the initial total depth, recalculate the initial effective depth by deducting effective cover from it. Assume width of beam as d by 1.5 to d by 2 if not given. Round it off to multiple of 50 mm. Take the minimum width equal to 200 mm. In step 2, let us calculate the effective span of the beam referring to clause 22.2 of IS456 as clear span plus the effective depth of the beam or center to center of the support, whichever is less. If only center to center span of the beam is given in problem statement, then take the effective span equal to that value. In step 3, Calculate the loads acting on the beam. First, calculate the self weight or dead load of a beam in kilonewton per meter by multiplying the cross sectional area of a beam with concrete density. Consider the concrete density as 25 kilonewton per meter cube by referring to IS456 clause 19.2.1. While the live load or imposed load on the beam is generally given in the problem statement. Next, calculate the total load by adding dead load and live load. Next, multiply this total load by partial safety factor gamma f given in table 18. The partial safety factor for dead load plus imposed load combination is equal to 1.5. So, Multiply the total load by 1.5 to get the factored load per unit length. This way, we get the analytical model of simply supported beam 
as shown in figure 1 to calculate bending moment and shear force. In step 4, do the computation of ultimate bending moment and ultimate shear force due to design load. For simply supported beam with UDL, the ultimate bending moment MU is equal to WL square by 8 and the shear force is equal to WL by 2. Now, to check the adequacy of the assumed depth of beam, use the expression in clause G1.1C of IS456. Rearrange this formula to get effective depth required for the ultimate bending moment acting. Here, put the value of MU in place of MU limiting. Get the value of XU max by D for given steel grade from page number 70 of IS456. If this effective depth required is less than initial assumed effective depth D, the section is safe. Else, increase the effective depth more than required. After check for depth, compute the reinforcement on the tension side of the beam in step number 5. The area of a steel required for the design bending moment can be calculated by referring the formula given in clause G1.1b of IS456-2000. This formula results in quadratic equation. So, you need to solve the quadratic equation to get the value of AST. Hence, you can use the simplified equation 2 to calculate area of a steel. Next, check the minimum area of a steel required. Use the expression given in clause 26.5.1.1a of IS456. Rearrange the expression to get the minimum area of a steel required. So, the required area of a steel should be maximum of AST and AST minimum. Next, select the suitable bar diameter. It should not be less than 10 mm. The usual diameter of the bars chosen are 12, 16, 20, 25 and 32 mm. Calculate the area of one bar. Then calculate number of bars. Round it off to nearest integer. Minimum number of bars should be 2 and maximum 6 bar should be used in one layer in beam. Next calculate area of a steel provided. Provide two numbers of suitable dia bar at top as anchor bars. In step 6, check the feasibility of the beam section and reinforcement for the shear stress. Calculate nominal shear stress tau v by using the equation given in clause 40.1 of IS456. Next, get the maximum shear stress tau c max from table 20 of IS456-2000. As per clause 40.2.3, tau c max must be more than tau v. If it is less than tau v, then increase the beam section dimensions. Now, let us compare this shear stress with the design shear strength of the beam. We can get this design shear strength based on the percentage area of a steel provided and the grade of concrete from table 19 of IS456. So, calculate the percentage area of a steel provided. Next, calculate the value of tau c from table 19. Let us try to understand this process by assuming M20 grade concrete and 0.756 percentage of steel. In table 19, the percentage value Pt is lying between 0.75 and 1. Hence, the value of a tau c is also between corresponding values 0.56 and 0.62 for M20 grade concrete. Here, we can calculate the tau c by using linear interpolation formula. Let us mark the value of x1, x2, y1, y2, x and y. By putting all these values in the interpolation formula, we get y equal to 0.561.
which is the value of tau c. Next, check if tau v is more than tau c. If yes, then as per the clause 40.4, design the shear reinforcement. If tau v is less than tau c, then provide the minimum shear reinforcement as per clause 26.5.1.6. Now let us see the steps involved in design of shear reinforcement if tau v is greater than tau c. Consider the vertical syrups as shear reinforcement. As per the clause 26.5.1.6, the shear reinforcement shall be provided to carry a shear equal to Vu minus tau c into Bd. Next, assume legs and diameter of the vertical stirrup. Two leg stirrups of diameter 6, 8, 10 or 12 mm are very commonly used. Hence, for simplicity, you can assume two leg 6 mm or 8 mm dia vertical stirrups. Next, calculate total area of a stirrup leg ASV by multiplying number of legs with cross-sectional area of a stirrup bar. The spacing of the stirrups can be calculated by referring equation given in clause 26.5.1.6 for vertical stirrups. Rearrange this equation to get the stirrup spacing SV. Next, calculate the stirrup spacing based on minimum shear reinforcement criteria using the expression given in clause 26.5.1.6. Rearrange this expression to get the minimum spacing. As per clause 26.5.1.5, the maximum spacing of the stirrups shall not exceed 0.75 times the effective depth of the beam. Also, the stirrup spacing should not be more than 300 mm in any case. So, calculate the third value of a stirrup spacing equal to 0.75 times effective depth and the fourth value of the stirrup spacing is equal to 300 mm. Now, provide the stirrup spacing as minimum value of the first, second, third and fourth spacing. Now, let us see the steps involved in providing minimum shear reinforcement if tau v is less than tau c. As explained previously, assume legs and diameter of the vertical stirrups. Next, calculate total area of a stirrup legs ASV. Next, calculate the minimum shear reinforcement spacing as discussed earlier. Next, compute maximum allowable stirrups spacing equal to 0.75 times effective depth and 300 mm as discussed earlier. Now provide the stirrup spacing as the minimum value of the first, second and third spacing. Finally, write the summary of the design and draw the reinforcement details. The design summary should include the grade of concrete and steel used, width and depth of beam and reinforcement details for main bars, anchor bars and vertical stirrups. The reinforcement sketch should include the longitudinal section and cross section of the beam with all the dimensions and reinforcement details. If you like this video, then subscribe this channel to get the interesting videos for visual and simplified learning of various civil engineering topics.